mentioned, we've got 21 sites around the country. We just haul these cases into the airport. Uh, we check them underneath the plane, get to the job site. And Scott, what's the first thing you're going to pull out? I'm going to pull out our mobile chassis. Okay, okay. So, so the mobile chassis. Okay, you, first thing you notice is that this is a standard off-the-shelf RC car, albeit a very expensive one, but it is off-the-shelf. But the fun part of this is we were able to really, you know, trick it out a little bit. We had to upgrade the servos because of the additional weight so we could steer. We had to trick out the springs. And then, sadly, uh, it was much too fast for us, right? The Scotty uh, uh, stock would probably go about 30 miles an hour, which was much too fast for what we were doing. So what we did is we have the battery voltage, and that allowed us much finer control. Scott? Okay, so we turn it around. You see a plate with a bunch of gizmos on the top of it that I'll let Tom tell you about. Great. So this is our, pl our sensor platform, which can be uh, changed if we want. But right now we've got it configured for temperature, humidity, and there's also that other section there that's a wireless local area network, a wireless LAN, and that allows the data to stream back to a data collection computer, which we'll show you later. You got anything else in that box? Oh, uh, we've got lots of stuff in here, Tom. Let's, let's reach down. Oh, good. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so what we have here is the GP, one of our global positioning sensors and a couple of light sensors. Tom, I'll let you go into detail. Okay, so one of the things when Scott was laying the grid and taking the measurements, the, the really the robotic activity that Scott was doing and the key activity was the location of the sensor at the grid intersection. With the, so what the, tr the real secret to the Scotty was being able to give the Scotty positional awareness. And we did that by tapping into the multi-billion dollar GPS system and using off-the-shelf GPS technology. The GPS in your car is accurate to about 12 feet, and that's good enough to get you to the local Walmart, but if you want to take a precision light me measurement, you need something much better than that. So with the GPS system that we use, it's accurate to about two centimeters. Scott? Okay, next we have an identical GPS. Why, why do we need it? Well, the real secret to the precision GPS is the use of a differential GPS. So we have uh, two, bit, two heads. One is roving on the Scotty, and the second one is stationary. If the stationary one, uh, it knows it's stationary, and if it sees that it has moved, that's the error signal. It wirelessly transfers that information over to the roving one and corrects for that. That's how we get the precise control. Scott? Okay. Now we have the controller to control the device. It's not autonomous. We have to control it by manually, and we chose to use a 2.4 gigahertz digital controller so that we make sure that we have more control and less less likelihood of uh, any interference uh, taking off with our expensive device. And to use it, to make it go forward and backwards, you pull, push and pull the trigger, and to turn it, you make it go left and right. Uh, Scott, how much did that cost? $150. So, when Scott and I were amazed when we found out that was $150, we originally started off with some you know, the basic RC car remote controls, and we thought, you know, we had some interference issues, we thought, we've got to do better. So we went to the store and we found that for just 150 bucks, we can get the digitally encoded signal, and we've not had a single control problem since. Scott? Okay, next we have to power the system, so we do that via two batteries. You ask yourself, it's a system, why do you need two batteries? One battery is for the traction, the driving of the system, and the other one is for is for our instrumentation, so that if we had to change the traction battery for any reason, we didn't interrupt the controls. Scott, what kind of batteries are those? These are nickel metal hydride batteries. And you ask, ask yourself, why did you use nickel metal hydride whenever lithium is much, it's a much smaller battery, you can get a lot more energy for, this, for a smaller footprint. And the answer to that is, is we like to put this on an airplane, and generally speaking, the FAA doesn't like you to leave like you traveling with lithium ion batteries with, a, with not connected to a device. So to avoid all that trouble, you just went with the nickel metal hydride uh, technology. So Scott's going to go ahead and complete the assembly of the Scotty. He just needs to snap on the GPS, GPS heads and make a few connections and we'll go ahead and, and uh, get the Scotty out here on the ground. And the other thing that he has to do, he has to complete his nerd suit. Uh, if you're going to take uh, light measurements for the robot, you need to look like a nerd. I think it's just part of the package. And so what he's going to do is we have a netbook, which we use as our data collection computer. And uh, this netbook has custom software in it. Uh, the software talks with the rover, just like you would expect. And driving the Scotty and taking the measurements is a little bit like playing paying pack, pack, 
it's can, can, can I stop you for a second, sure. Tom? Yeah. Things just look almost complete, but not quite complete oh. here. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see. We got a light. Yeah. We got a light. We had people. Oh. We're out in the middle of the street, so yeah. we got curious people, and you know, normally, okay, maybe ah. Oh, Oh, normally there might be a dead squirrel or something, or maybe even maybe even a skunk. That's just that just makes for a bad evening altogether. But we're from Tennessee, so I think we're going to throw a little kill out there. How about some chicken? Do you want to go? New Chevy Bolt. That's right. It's always a hazard when you take measurements, right? We're out we're out in a parking lot. Okay, so now Scott's going to get his dirty gun. As well as listed in the show guide. All entries must be turned into the distributor. Can you hear me okay if I keep talking, or should I just wait? Okay, I'll just keep going then. So as I mentioned, he's going to strap on the computer, and the software is a little bit like playing Pac-Man. Uh, there's a virtual grid that's set up on the screen, and then the position of the Scotty is represented as a flashing green dot on the computer screen. And, the, and Scott's job then is just take the flashing green dot and just drive it around like you would imagine, like you did with Blinky in, in the Pac-Man. So it's actually very easy. On the, on the grid, once we traverse through a grid, the color on the grid changes from a black to a gray to represent the uh, amount of light that we're actually receiving. So when we're done, we actually have a uh, photopic map of the light level beneath the, uh, beneath the pictures there. You about ready, Scott? I am about ready, Tom. Okay. So those of you here at the beginning remember that Scott had to take a measuring wheel and chalk and actually draw a grid down on the ground. With the Scotty and the software, there's no need to do that. We have a simple calibration routine built into the software because, again, remember, Scotty knows where he is on the Earth accurate with two centimeters. So we simply drive the Scotty to three points on the grid that we've picked out press a button for the calibration, and the computer automatically calculates a virtual grid that's on the ground. And that, that virtual grid is then uh, mapped onto the computer screen. So, can you get the chicken, Scott? That's what I think everybody oh, wants to get see. the chicken. I will get the chicken. He's going to get the chicken. Then I'm going to make you wait. So while he's uh, after the chicken here, the Scotty is actually streaming data to the data collection computer at uh, uh, five times per second, and it's you know temperature, humidity, uh, uh, photopic and scotopic light readings. And, uh, there you go. Great. So Scott, why don't you tell me some of the advantages of the Scotty? Okay. So in summary, some some of the advantages of the Scotty is one safety because now you have this device out in the middle of the street rather than the lighting engineer standing in the middle of the street trying to take these manual measurements. Other, uh, other advantage is, is positional awareness, so you get more accurate data. You can return to the site later on and take the data exactly where you were before. And finally, just the time savings. You don't have to go out, you don't have to create this grid in the middle of the night and the daytime. And then, like we said earlier, they've got a couple of hours, that's about a 20 minute operation typically. Thank you. Uh, so just to wrap things up here, the, the key idea we want to get across here is that, uh, you know, when everybody thinks about a robot, they think of these fully autonomous machines, but it doesn't have to be that. Just by taking advantage of existing GPS technology, enabling Scotty with positional awareness, we were able to really uh, come up with a neat solution for the problems that we have. So that's going to end our demo today. Uh, for those of you who are interested, you're welcome to come up and drive the Scotty, or if you have any questions, we'll be happy to take them. Thank you for your attention.